Are we going to get a recession? I'm one of the people who think we're already in a recession for a lot of reasons. And again, technically, fundamentally, and even geopolitically or politically, I think, I think the, they've moved the goalposts of a definition of recession last year. It's very easy to do. And then, but I think there's simple, obvious indicators. I think even the New York Fed has given it a 70% chance of recession just based on the yield curve. But then you have the Conference Board of Leading Indicators screaming recession. And then I think most importantly, you have the change in the M2 money supply. For the last 153 years, every time you see a 2% year-over-year reduction in the M2 money supply, a deflationary recession follows. We saw a 4% year-over-year decline. And to me, that's a, that's a neon flashing sign of a recession either off our bow or already under it. Uh, the main reason we're not getting negative on recession yet or publicly talk about recession is because the labor markets are strong. You could take that stovepipe and talk for hours about the distortion, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, how we measure unemployment, how we measure these indicators. Nick Everstadt has done a great job of looking under the hood and being more transparent about what really is full employment. Many of these jobs are second, third jobs. There are millions who've just bailed out of the workforce who aren't counted in the statistics. Now again, I'm not saying it's as obvious as the unemployment lines we saw in the Great Depression. There are a lot of people sitting home on the couch not working, and there are a lot of people working two or three jobs to boost those numbers. But it's always a lagging indicator in employment. I think labor will be the next market to crack. But I think based on the yield curve, based on the money supply, and really based on the inflation, invisible tax, which has not been defeated, many, many Americans are already feeling the, the recession. And there are a lot more layoffs in the bigger, bigger tech sectors that are to come and have already happened. But I'm, I'm, I'm quite negative. But I know it's not as palpably obvious of a recession as other headline-making recessions. But I think it's just a matter of time when that becomes official. The narrative that we are being told today, what is acceptable right now, what is in the Overton window of discussion, if you will, is mm -hmm. GDP looks strong, inflation's mm -hmm. coming down, soft landing ahead, no recession mm -hmm. to worry about. And you yeah. are saying, absolutely not. I think you even said the hard landing's already happened. Like the casualties are already out there on the runway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the engines are, 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 you know, half a mile away, burning wreckage, you know? So, uh, so why, why, why should we not be cheering this most recent number, these re most recent numbers? Well, first of all, the, the simple fact in this Atlanta fed now, you know, nominal GDP forecast at 5.9% or, or, or excuse me. Re, yeah. In real terms, it, it's now 4.9% just because it's come down a bit since you wrote your article, but it was 5.9 <laughs> when you started just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And, and I'm saying, okay, but that's also on the back of unprecedented fiscal, you know, borrowing and, and U.S. Treasury issuance and more and more debt, you know, another nine point, another nearly two trillion by the back end of this year. So it's my my joke in the article was it's like if my son was at a frat in college and I gave him my Amex card and he created growth for the frat based on my credit card and had all kinds of fun with that. He is getting growth, more beer, more kegs, more invitees, kids coming from other campuses. He's getting, you know, he's the Greek god of the frat system, but it's really still just debt-based growth. When that Amex bill has to be paid, we still have a problem. So when you have GDP growth on the back of rising yields because of falling bond prices, because of more issuance and more supply of U.S. treasuries, that's not growth that's just more debt it's more debt and the idea that we're in some soft landing or that we have a resilient economy or a strong labor force again to me that is, is that's pravda like that's just pravda like untrue and i and, and again look at the math so i don't just sound like i'm again a tinfoil headed gold bug gloom and doomer because that's i understandable but i think it's a little unfair Again, we talked about some of this last time, but so much has happened since then. Again, almost a year ago to this date, we had the guilt implosion on the pension implosion in the UK, which was a direct result of Fed policy here in the US. Then in 2023, early this year, we've almost forgotten we had a major bank failure uh, in, the, in, the, in the regional banks. And in we, addition- we, Three of the four, four <laughs> sorry, three of the four largest banks to ever fail have failed this year. And yet we're kind of out of sight, out of mind that because just push that away. The sin of omission, get that off the headlines. We're all good. Be calm, carry on. And then in the meantime, we have a 25% year to date increase in bankruptcies. We have corporate debt expenses are up 22%. That would explain why we have 400 bankruptcies year to date. And these 400 corporations have filed bankruptcy. It's rising at the fastest rate since 2010. It's double the levels of last year. And the top 10 bankruptcies account for 200,000 jobs. And then you look at the layoffs at places like Spotify or Microsoft or Google or Amazon or even Goldman Sachs. I mean, Google is 10,000, Amazon 18,000. Uh, you've got, I think, 
at least 18 of these companies with a billion dollars in liabilities. That's like, you know, Silicon Valley Bank or Bed Bath & Beyond. But when you're having these type of layoffs, and by the way, when Google and Amazon or Goldman are doing layoffs, that means they're not making earnings. So there is a correlation between the mm -hmm. markets and the economy. But the bigger point is, when you're having bankruptcies and layoffs, how can you say you have a strong labor market? And if you're waiting for the NBER to tell you you're in a recession, they're always going to be a year late. You're going right. to be deep into your knees into recession when it becomes official. The strong labor market, again, Nick Eberstadt's done a finer job than me. I wrote an article about this in 2019. The uh, What is the term of art? The civilian labor force that they use at the Bureau of Labor Statistics to measure U3 and U6 unemployment. They're talking about civilian labor force to measure employment as a percentage, but that civilian labor force omits millions who don't even look for jobs anymore. So it's, it's like it, trying it, to- it, it actually omits over a hundred million working age adults. So our, 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 our strong employment, which means we're in a, in a softish landing, despite all the evidence of bankruptcies and layoffs now and to come because of rising rates and rising debt costs, that's simply a, not a true statement. We don't have a resilient economy. We don't have a strong labor force. And even many of those who are employed, that's not multiple job growth. It's individuals with multiple jobs. Again, when you get into the weeds of this, it's like saying we're going to measure the number of tall people in America, but we're only going to use the NBA as our labor pool. In other words, we're, we're skewing the data. Mm -hmm. This is not Matt Pipenberg, gold bug, doom and gloomer, trying to make the world bad and good for gold. I'm saying separate it from precious metals and inflation and debasement of currencies and look at debt, but look at misinformation. By the way, John Williams, who does shadow stats, was just on with David Lynn talking about real true inflation. We had 3.7% by the real labor statistics. He's saying it's closer to 11.5% based on the same metrics that we used in the Volcker era. Yeah. So again, data dependence on data that is not accurate to to masquerade a story of a soft landing or to masquerade a story of a war on inflation that's victorious when we're not beating inflation and we're not having a strong labor force. And more importantly, labor is a lagging indicator. We will not see the true pain of our quote unquote strong employment force until we're knee deep. Excuse my other assistant here. I got to get it off until we're <laughs> knee deep in a recession inflation. I think the reason Powell is raising rates and Q team reducing the balance sheet is very simple because he sees a recession already here and getting deeper. The only two weapons the Fed has is the price of money and the supply, the, the amount of money. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can manipulate interest rates and they can expand or contract the balance sheet of the Fed. That's it. And so up until a few years ago, we had a too fat a Fed balance sheet and we had zero bound interest rates. That meant Powell was impotent in the face of the next recession. He had nothing to cut because rates were already at zero. Right. And his balance sheet was so fat, he had nothing he could, you know, he could expand. But now he's raising rates and reducing the balance sheet. So when it really does become obvious, despite all the things we've talked about, the litany of evidence that we're deep in a recession, when we really see a market sell-off, the real crisis that triggers the Fed. When we see a market sell off now with a five and a half Fed funds rate, he can actually reduce rates again. He'll have some ammunition in that revolver to actually fight that real problem in the markets. And he'll be able to expand the Fed balance sheet because he's QT at the same time that he's raising rates. So again, all I think he's doing is he's he had two empty revolvers two years ago. Now, because of QT and because of rate hikes, both of those revolvers have a little bit more bullets in them. That to me is the real motive. I watched. Yeah, meiner Meinung nach befinden sich die USA schon bereits in einer Rezession. Okay. Uh, die die Bitdaten, die Sinnstrukturkurve, die Produktionsdaten und die wichtigste, wichtigsten uh, Märkte, wirtschaftliche Indikatoren sagen, dass wir schon in einer Rezession befinden. Um, Im letzten Jahr, ihr Deck versucht den Paul in die andere Politiker, wie alle verzweifelte Politiker, die Definition einer Rezession <lacht> neu zu definieren. Uh, sie wollen die Wahrheit uh, zu widerlaufen und eine, eine Panik am Markt verhindern. Kurz gesagt, eine Lüge, Propaganda, das ist meine Meinung. Uh, es is this, some may say that uh, rising bond yields, especially treasury yields, may signal actually an improving uh, economic outlook from the markets mm -hmm. as people sell mm -hmm. off treasuries. Is that what's going on right now? <laughs> well, Janet Yellen will tell you that, you know, rising yields are a good sign, strong sign of economic growth. I think it's deficit driven. <laughs> Uh, and I think we're, a, you know, we're a bad credit with a declining asset in our U.S. 10 year and certainly on the long end of the curve. Uh, the bond market to me is everything. But no, I don't think 
it's a positive sign. I think it is, again, deficit-driven, debt-driven. Uh, rising rates obviously impact bond prices negatively and send yields up. Uh, I think the Fed is in a vicious circle. Um, but uh, the short answer to your question, David, is when you have rising yields, rising GDP, and rising deficits, to me, that's more reminiscent of an emerging market, not a uh, strong, robust, developed economy. And the U.S. just frankly isn't what it used to be. But in terms of the recession and this debate about a hard landing or a soft landing or lagging indicators like bogus employment numbers from the BLS or debt-driven GDP, I think let's just stick to the, the simple stupid because I think the stupid is really simple. Uh, to me, and again, this is my opinion, but the evidence supports it. The idea of a soft landing or no landing is to me farcical when the evidence is that, you know, the fuselage is on fire, the luggage is over the runway and the engine's somewhere in the grass behind the plane and the passengers are screaming. That's a, the evidence of a hard landing is pretty obvious to me, despite the BCOM carry on narrative. It isn't me talking my book. I look at basic Wall Street indicators like the yield curve. I mean, you still get, you know, you still have an inverted yield curve that has symbols that's starting to straighten. That's actually a negative sign. But the yield curve inversion is a, is a clear indicator of a recession. The most obvious is the Conference Board of Leading Indicators, which has been right consistently. And that put us at a 4% threshold into recession last December. Um, you've got M2 money supply at a 4% decline. There's only been four times in the history of our country where we've seen a decline in the M2 money supply. I mean, granted, it was up 27 percent between 2020 and 21 and only 4 percent down this year. But that's the scope and pace of that decline. The fact that there is a decline always indicates deflation, always indicates a recession or even a depression, as we saw in the 30s. So those are basic, consistent and reliable recession indicators notwithstanding a completely Fed-driven S&P, which is not really free market capitalism, it's Pavlovian, as I said. You've also got Main Street indicators that are not just talking in my book. You've got the highest number of bankruptcies, double last year's amount, over 450. A lot of those have hundreds of thousands of jobs behind them. They're twice the pace of, uh, of what we saw in 2009 after the great financial crisis. And these are headline layoffs. But, you know, you've also got credit card and card delinquencies, and I call it the you know, the Oliver Anthony indicator, this guy from Farm to Virginia wrote a song about rich men north of Richmond. And he's really kind of, it's, you know, he, the lyrics of his song may seem simple, but it's like my dollar ain't worth crap and I'm getting taxed to no end. He's really the anthem for the American middle class, which has been completely eclipsed by the invisible tax of misreported inflation and the, the higher for longer pain of higher interest rates on credit cards and car loan, which are defaulting at rates higher than the great financial crisis. So the Main Street indicator, that backbone of America, Stevensville, Michigan, Farmville, Virginia, Toledo, Ohio, that's not, you know, Switzerland, Polo Plain in England or, you know, the West, or, the West Coast of, or New York City. That's the real America. And they're getting crushed. And again, that's not sensational. Um, and so those Main Street indicators and those Wall Street indicators suggest that we are clearly in a recession and based just on the M2 money supply, either in it or heading towards one in 2024. And that has nothing to do with risk asset markets. Those are very separate things.